the Opel Astra launched in South Africa during 2016. And in fact, you can see with all the liveries saying it is a finalist in the 2017 South African Motoring, Guild of Motoring Journalists Car of the Year competition. And if you go by public voting, in fact, it's the public and the people's favorite, according to one poll that I've been reading recently. So definitely a high demand, interesting C-segment hatchback that's become pretty popular and a big contender. The model we're looking at right now and that one we've been testing, and we've had this on an extended test this time, which is really nice and interesting and very pleasant. We've had it for nearly five weeks. And this is the 1.4 turbo. It's quite a familiar engine, of course, in the Opel range. That 1.4 turbo, that's now becoming quite popular across the Opel range. Puts out 110 kilowatts and 245 liters of torque. But it's in the slightly larger body because they use the same engine, of course, in the Corsa Sport and the fiery little Adam S goes into all of those, that same engine. But it's a pretty hot engine. This is an automatic version as well. So it has a six-speed automatic gearbox. You can see nice mag wheels on the car as well. Good-sized C-segment family hatch. Let's take a look on the inside of the car. Behind the wheel of the Opel Astra hatch, it's a very, very comfortable place to be and to live. You've got, of course, what's standard these days, the multifunction steering wheel with cruise control. It's also got forward collision alert, which is a nice extra feature to have. And you can even adjust and set the distance that it's active from if you use that button over there. You can see that. So that's a nice, interesting feature as well. You look at your dashboard, of course, you've got your computer readout in the center. We've done just over 2,100 kilometers on this test at 14.3 kilometers per liter that's important kilometers per liter it comes out at just just over seven liters per hundred kilometers exceptional considering we've done a lot of driving a lot of open road driving and a lot of town driving as well so a good mix i can tell you you should be able to achieve a figure like this very very easily of course it's got the nice touch screen facility over here the infotainment screen you just press the touch screen for audio for example there goes your phone. Very simple. The Bluetooth works extremely well. I've been using it a lot. A comment complaint, you can call it what you want, is Opel used the GM MyLink system, which means there's no navigation system on this vehicle, but you can link your phone to the car and then use your maps or ways on your phone. I'm a little bit old-fashioned still. I would have preferred navigation. And then let me get my other gripe out of the way right now on that system. I believe on a car like this... You may have parking beepers around you, but where's the reverse camera when you go into reverse gear? You've got forward and rear PDCs, but I really would appreciate a reverse camera on this car. You come down very neat over here. Something interesting. This little section over here I was convinced should open, yet it doesn't. So I'm not quite sure why that is there or the function of that, but I would have really liked a nice opening cubby section over there for my own use. It would have been really useful. You come down to the six-speed automatic gearbox, very smooth, very effective, very well matched to this engine, gives you a great ride, downshifts when you want them, excellent. Then over here, these little buttons over here are pretty important. You've got a lane departure warning system that you can disengage with the press of a button, which then, when you're using it, shows up on your dashboard in your speedo. Very nice warning you. It goes orange if, for example, you are getting to uh, drifting out of your lane. The other thing is it does have the auto stop start function over here. And if you don't want that, if you find it irritating or for whatever reason, you can simply switch it out over there. And of course, that's your DSC, dynamic skid control or hooligan button. Call it what you want. If you want to play with a car a little bit more than it would allow under normal circumstances. Finally, as I mentioned, your front and rear PDC park distance control are over there. One other thing I must mention on this car is very neat looking and very good fit and finish to it. But this silver chrome trim over here, I found, can cause pretty bad reflections while you're driving. And there were a number of occasions where driving in certain conditions with obviously the sun behind you, I did find that this reflection was somewhat of an irritation to me. It may seem like a minor point, but it's something worth noting and taking note of. Let's take a look what it's like if you're going to live in the back seat of this Opel Astra hatch.
Moving into the back seat of the new Astra hatch, you can see the driver's seat is set for myself. There is plenty of room for me to stretch out and really sit very comfortable in the back and adequate room for me with my hat on. This is where, of course, this is a C segment, not a B segment hatch. It's that extra space of the C segment and the platform that this car is based on that gives you the extra room. You've got seating for two to three in the back. Very comfortable, very spacious. Cloth trim in the Enjoy version. You go up the Sport, you can get, of course, uh, leather or something like that. You're looking at, let's get important facts here, price-wise. You're looking at 344,000 Rand for the Turbo Enjoy automatic version as we're driving over here. What Opel are doing is they're taking the Golf head-on. And I think they're doing a pretty good job of it. So you are looking at a car like the Golf as the direct competition. You can throw the Peugeot 308 GT line into the mix as well. That comes in with its 96 kilowatt three-cylinder 1200 engine. So those are the two very, very good comparisons you can make if you're looking for a car like this. C-segment hatch, spacious, nice family vehicle, plenty of power from that 110 kilowatt engine. What more can you ask for? If you're looking for a family vehicle like this, a C-segment hatch, you really need to put the Opel Astra on your shortlist and check it out before you make any kind of buying decision. For Motor Matters, I'm Alan R and I'll see you next time.